University for uh, law and business for my first two years. Uh, and then halfway through, I switched to the art program and, and finished a degree in Bachelor in Fine Arts. I don't know that I have a definition for street art necessarily. Um, as far as the illegal side goes, I, when I first started out, I, I wasn't really inclined to use spray paint because I wasn't really interested in having to sneak around. Um, I wasn't really interested in having to destroy property or, or cause any kind of negative energy to things. And so I started using tape, which is a temporary medium. Um, and so with tape, I can go, I can put up a line. If somebody tells me to take it off, I take it off. It's as simple as that. Um, so I think with the tape that I'm using, it, it, kind of, uh, it kind of makes it more of a gray line of, of what is illegal and what's not, because there's actually no damage being done. My favorite city to paint. <clears throat> I don't know that I have a favorite. I think, I mean, I, I, I live in Brooklyn, so I, I definitely have an affinity to that. Um, but I, I think any, anywhere I go, it's, it's always kind of a new and exciting experience, and I, I kind of like to take on anywhere I go. I guess. The work that I do outside relies very heavily on the people that are walking on the streets. Um, so in a way, the only way the work is kind of complete is when the public interacts with it. Um, and in that sense, I, I guess the motivation and the reason I'm making the work is for that, is for the people and for that interaction with them, I guess. Style-wise, I mean, it's very minimal and geometric. Um, I like to think it's very honest um, and playful when it can be. I think a lot of the work that I do is, is based off of very simple ideas and, and very simple architectures that all of us encounter. You know, we all walk by doorways and, and brick walls and sidewalks. And so a lot of the work is just playing with those kind of common architectural spaces that we all kind of encounter every day. So, I, I mean, I think it's just about reawakening spaces, you know? I mean, I think you walk through from place to place and, and sometimes you have these blinders on and, and you're just kind of like walking. Um, and so I guess there's something really nice when you're walking and then all of a sudden something catches your eye and you're like, oh, wait, and then you stop and you look at it. And then the next time you walk, maybe you're thinking about something else, you know? So I don't know, I mean, just the fact that, I guess to slow down for a second and maybe take a second to enjoy things, I guess. I don't really see any contradiction in it. I, I mean, I never have any tension about doing work outside and inside. To me, it's, it's always kind of about this reaction to space, this, um, these taking these visual cues from wherever I am and playing with those. Um, so for, for me, I don't, I don't find there to be much of a contradiction in, in the outside and inside. I know with some people and some artists, maybe they have different mediums that rely heavily on, on the street, but for me, um, I don't know, I mean, like you can see in the gallery, it's, there's still the element of playing with space and playing with the idea of color and shape. Um, so I don't think that gets lost in translation. If somebody makes something in a city in kind of an abandoned location, as long as they can get a photo of it and on the blogs, people around the world will see it. Um, and I think that, that spreading of, of these works that are, are kind of all around the world in these remote locations, it, I don't know, it brings, it brings all the artists together and it brings the viewing of the art um, to, to an easier place. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think, it's, I think it's fundamental to the development of it, for sure.